pop 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 Joining me, I was, I was going to say it. Well, well, introduce me, and then I will. Sure. I will Across from me is our casual movie goer. Why don't Why don't you say uh, say something, Kerr? My name is Carrie Smarsminsky. Oh, wow. Do I have a new voice? Why you did do? you want you me sound, to say? You it? sound different. Oh, maybe a bit of a cold. And keeping the lights on, our critic in residence, Tim Brayton. Yeah, I was going to say it is so nice to hear your voice again, Rob. It has been many episodes since I last chatted with you, and. Uh, and I think it's been a catastrophe. I think the website has practically burned down in your absence. I am very pleased to have you back. Oh, well, so, thank you. you know what? Uh, you. Carrie and I both checked out the, uh, some of the episodes that have, have gone out since. I, I, I think you guys did a tremendous job. You had a well, couple guests. You. We had Mandy on. So good. Yes, so, no, Sarah- Ma- Mandy and Brennan have both been very good sports. Appreciate both of them very much. I, I fully take the blame for any any shortcomings that have cropped up. I understand there was, a, there was a fight. Uh, to see who who was going to play the role as the surrogate uh, Carrie uh, or the casual movie goer, nobody wanted that. that I, I was going to say it was more who there was a fight to see who wasn't going to play Carrie. <laughs> I know. I'm like I I feel like I should be offended, right? Like I, I was. Uh, I was like maybe I it's because you're irreplaceable. Oh, it's Ro- I Rob and I are cogs in a machine, Carrie. Oh, you, sure. You are sure. a true original. <laughs> I don't think that's how I took it on the episode. Everyone's like, ooh, hot potato. Don't want to be that one. <laughs> but uh, you guys did an awesome job. Really, really loved listening to that. The other benefit of that episode is I don't think I would have done it justice because I'm going to be honest. I did think that a zeitgeist was a kind of a monster. I mean, we we picked a topic that I didn't think would would appeal to the two of you. Well, like, <laughs> so. It would have gone it would have gone awry. So but it is good to be back. It's good to be back. We're joining for a pass the popcorn. I did a poor job introducing. Normally I should have said that at the top, but we are doing a, a special pass the popcorn thanks to Patreon Gavin McDowell. Uh, we're doing Patreon this, and sometime contributors. Sometime as well. contributors as well now. It just joined us uh, kind of on the on the on the full time circuit of of contribution. So going beyond uh, bad French cinema and looking to other other types of reviews that that Gavin will be providing us. But first, Gavin has provided us the Billy Jack series, which I had not heard of until this very moment. Tim, you had cautioned us uh against uh against this at the at the forefront uh and i i I didn't know why i went in very open-minded and then uh yeah we'll get to it we'll get to it we'll get to it i i will say before we get to it merely that i had heard of these films many years ago Mm -hmm. and i had not until this episode watched any of them and that is that is all that i will say they are a curiosity they are, um, and I have a lot to discuss, less about the content of the film and more about the making of and the people behind it. Uh, For sure. Yeah. I think that's that's where the true story, I think, lies. I'll be curious to hear from Gavin at some point, too, as to the the, the, the rationale for, for, for gifting he, us these films. He's, he speaks, he's spoken to the rationale on Letterboxd. We can talk about that when we get into it. <laughs> but first, we've been watching some well, movies. Uh, well, I was going to say... I have a curiosity. It, it, can we can we talk about what you've been doing in the interim, or do we want to talk about worth mentioning first? It's been a, it's yeah. It's how has it been three weeks, four weeks? Because I'm I'm a little curious what happened on your trip. Because you seem Rob to have come back with a little bit of a of a Hitler mustache. Oh, thank you. Or maybe that's just maybe that's just the Zoom window. <laughs> yeah, that's why do it you that look way. like you have a Hitler like mustache? Yeah, it does look like my. Uh, that is super. This area so, has not filled so in properly. So where were you and what were you up to? <laughs> I don't know and why it's should okay. I be looking for your name in international newspapers? I cannot look at this now. I it doesn't the, look this way in real life. I think it's the way the light is hitting it, but yeah, it really accentuates. <laughs> I the, am because like when, when you picture. smile, it goes away, but when you're just staring there on the zoom, we need to like screen capture the zoom oh, and put it, it up because you you are you are giving me a hardcore. We can be <laughs> we can call it Chaplin mustache if you would may feel more comfortable with that. Harry's documented it. So I, folks I want to go with Hitler. Does it, I what does it look like? No, straight it, on. it, Oh, just like Hitler here. Look at it. No, no, but just like when you're in the room with me here, I mean, does it, it doesn't look like, look like that. Oh, interesting. No, I'd like to say that it does, but it doesn't. It's a nice shadow. Thank you. 
look the part, you know, look the part. <laughs> Got to own it. Um, if uh, So, Tim, you asked what we've been up to. What have you been up to, aside, uh, aside from emulating the father of Nazism? We had a couple of tr- trips back to back. Our oldest went off to a uh, sleepaway camp for two weeks. I took my youngest and uh, we went camping in that neck of the woods so I wouldn't have to do the back and forth. And then immediately, as soon as we got back with the two, two of them. We had a two-hour turnaround, two, right? Two-hour turnaround, and then straight to Chicago, and then off to Alaska for, for about two weeks, which is where we've been the last uh, two weeks. And it was a nice, a lovely gift from Carrie's parents. Um, it's As part of their anniversary, they gifted us and your, your sister, Carrie, and their family uh, this wonderful trip to Alaska. And uh, yeah, that it, was, is, it was something. That is not how anniversary presents work. No, no, no. What sort of con have you been running on Carrie's parents? My parents really, really like me. Um, so then what ends up happening is they're like, okay, well, they're also really into equity. So they're like, well, we have to make sure we invite everybody else. Well, not just that. I think uh, for them, the joy in life is seeing others have joy. That is and um, I think that um, as... We got certainly more out of the experience than I think they did, but for them, it was us having the kids in particular, their grandkids having having these this wonderful time and getting to see them laugh and run and have have a good time. So, so the anniversary present from you to them was literally you were there. Our presence. Our gift. Yes. Is our I've been trying that for so many consecutive Christmases and it never seems to land. <laughs> I will say. To be fair, my gift was my excellent um planning skills. navigating and planning of of said okay. trip that fell into fell, not only not really fell into my lap but i have a tendency when when there is a little bit of like uncertainty as to how things take should go is just i take I just take the lead yeah the lead. Is, the lead is, is another why, word this for is it. why you have elected to uh, to become a movie producer it is it really does uh f- fall in nicely with that that quality but um how would you say that that quality aligns rob with the dynamic of of my family it's tough. There are moments where I must step away uh, <laughs> for fear of them seeing a side of me that yeah. I prefer not them not to see. Yes, uh, but they, yeah, they're a little aimless. Um, sure, and um, a little wandering. Sim- yes, simple things that are uh, simple to me uh, sure. m- may not be as simple to to everybody else. And sure, uh, with execution and like delivery, you, you just yeah. pulled out your passport. Uh, we go to another checkpoint where you need said document, and now it's missing. Um, it's like what what's happened what's happened in the the five minutes doing these two things yeah it's fine for me like we just roll that's the thing we all just roll with the lost passport in between each stop but rob gets sort of this like facial twitch slash eye thing where nobody else knows but me that he's just like raging on the inside so that i'm always playing the balance of like well i get their perspective because i also have lost my passport but then i get rob's perspective of like this could be a little bit frustrating so i end up playing the middle person in all of this i don't want to take sides just hearing the phrase lost passport made my entire body just like suddenly <laughs> turn into a cauldron of stomach acid there were uh, quite a few There's moments a few. like this um tim you would have hated this trip um it's it was close <laughs> close quarters it's a it's number one it was a a land tour which you're b- traveling by bus in uh, mostly Aye. um and what was interesting i will i won't disclose the cruise line um on on here for fear of getting some I thought it was norwegian Okay, or we can disclose oh, the the cruise line certainly. <laughs> more like Norwegian. Who cares? Um, so more in, like in, Norwegian. Uh, 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 like Keep going. Tim. September Keep September first. I'm, I'm done. September first, they've removed testing requirements for COVID, um, which would have been a, a much easier method of of travel. Um, I'm still very conservative on the COVID side as far as wanting to be feel protected and f- feel like I'm not going to get it again. Um, but when we arrive on the bus. There are no precautions or no testing requirements and no mask enforcement. Um, and we're together for like seven days with these 40 people, close yeah. close quarters, a lot of coughing happening, a lot, a lot of, of coughing, a lot of noises yeah. coming from people. We're masked. We're, we've chosen to be masked, but nobody else really is. And interestingly enough, after that portion of the trip, when we arrive to the cruise portion, there is a testing requirement of passing a PCR test, which is the more rigorous of the tests. It tests a little... Uh, little, it looks for more complex things. I don't know the details, but more than the antigen test would. And we pass that fine. But when we're checking in, we find out that a party from that tour group of 40 did test positive 
And now we are all close contacts. Daily testing. And well, before we got to the daily testing part, they had no idea how to like what to do with us and our group of the group of 40 that was with us. Like they have two doctors, they have the cruise doctor and then they have the doctor in the port and the other one doesn't want to sign off on us getting on board until the other one decide, agrees to do it. And so there was like two hours of this back and forth where we, didn't even, know, we didn't even know if we were going to get on the damn boat. Yeah. But then once we were on, it was just like Russian roulette of getting tested because <laughs> Now you're probably like, getting it from the boat. You're getting people it from are... <laughs> other people probably who aren't being tested and who just managed to sneak, get on yeah. without, you know, uh, maybe a false negative. It's a lot or... of detail, right? Anyway, a it's a lot of detail, a little bit stressful. Remember when this started and I was like, highlight, low light, Rob, what's yeah. your highlight? And then this was a lot of detail. Sure. I want to know what was your favorite thing about the trip? We haven't really talked about it because we came back and we were a little tired. What was your favorite part of the trip? I really enjoyed our uh, little family trip time that we had uh doing the zip lining zip lining in the woods oh, okay it was very enjoyable that wasn't on my list actually i i may i edit yeah the whale the whales great now you took mine okay thanks okay rob. jump right thanks. in then. well so uh, go ahead well, i want to i want to follow up so we now know your favorite part rob it sounds like your least favorite part was the covid testing so i'd like you to go on about that for the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> please do please do you know what it's not it's not te- it's people yeah That's, rob doesn't like people it's just, it's just pe- it's no people. i don't either i get it yeah, I get it. As I get older, I and I've uh, it's just people, and just I'm a, I'm, a, grumpy. Yeah. I'm a person like, too. If, <laughs> but if I could take a cruise vacation where the only non-crew member on the entire cruise ship was me, that's how I would like to do a cruise. Yes, but Same I gather that's Rob. not an option. And so l- one one more quick story. All Sorry, right. All just right. as an example of people. Okay, oh, and I'm geez. not saying Are a you person. You talk about the napkin. Oh, there was that. But no, Okay, uh, that is another example. Uh, we, an, an indigenous person to Alaska, uh, we stopped on a part of the tour and they gave we us- were at, We were in it, we had Yeah, we were in Denali National Park, clear view of it. They said it's very uncommon, clear view of it, standing there. This yeah. uh, indigenous person is part of the tour and gives us like a little speech about this area and th- their native people. And um, one of the things the tour guide had said right beforehand is- don't take pictures because in their culture, it's not, that's not something that is, is kosher for them. So don't do that. And then immediately I hear kids in the background, like shuffling their feet, making these loud noises. And this, this person is, is very quiet, big person, but they're quiet. Um, so I start, I go to the back and this I start like making the rounds, making like trying to He's corral like, other people's here. kids and give them the shush <laughs> face. And then people, I start, imagine this went very well. people start taking photos. And then so I'm like, no photos. They, 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 just said, they, they right. had just said no photos. You've just taken this person's spirit in their culture. Like, Rob is, could not let this go. Which again, I'm not saying you weren't that you weren't right. But you've been hanging on this for many days. Yeah. He's still thinking about it. You're looking a little flushed right now. Uh, thinking about it. It wasn't a highlight. And for then sure. later oh, on, <laughs> later on in the trip, there was a, a, a person who I overheard talking saying like, Hey, I gave that I gave that Indian guy ten bucks. I feel really good about myself. Like you know, I feel like they they, they needed that. You know, like he was he was, he was out. okay. I know that I'm I'm saying I'm saying it as the person said okay. that. Okay, quote. Yeah, quote. Random uh, you know, bag. It looks like he needed the money, and you know, I I, I spotted them the ten, and and then I made I, I had him take a picture with my daughter. I was like, <sighs> "Fuck you, dude." Yeah, Rob was so <laughs> mad. Just like he was just like seething on the COVID buzz. <laughs> Like arms crossed, like, and then kept telling me the story over and over again. Like, you I know, have the, empathy. The first thing, Carrie, that you said to me was that you thought that you'd be refreshed after the vacation, and you're not. And it, I, yeah. I think I see why. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's m- multiple complexities on the trip, just like that. And again, so, oh, go ahead. So, what about the napkin? Oh, you go ahead, Carrie. <laughs> the napkin. Once you get to the cruise, I get. I'm stereotyping right now, but there's certain people that travel on cruises. In particular, this cruise. So Rob uh, was sitting next to this woman. She drops her napkin. Somebody who's a staff member is working in there. And she basically points to the napkin and is like, oh. Looks like I dropped it. Looks like I dropped my napkin. (laughs) And like waiting for the staff person to pick up her napkin that is right by her feet. Rob's appalled. I mean, we're all appalled, but Rob is just like visually appalled. Like, so now this woman knows that she's going to hell based on Rob's face, basically, which I feel good about. But these things like people, people, 
And Rob just People's couldn't let it go. So then you have me, Miss Switzerland over here, trying to like navigate the mood for the entire time between that and then my sister's also a little bit on the on the type A side along with Rob too. So trying to navigate all of those things and my parents' complexities came home a little bit tired. But I also was going to say the zip line for me was actually a low light. I never oh. told you this. Was your hoo-ha showing? I broke I broke my hoo-ha. Oh, on that. wow. I never told you about this. I think I really hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so the guy, we get to the end of this long zip line tour. Already I'm feeling very constrained in this thing. At the end, the last ride of the whole thing, he's like, okay, this one's a little bit of a bumpy ride. I was like, okay. Is that a Harry Potter reference? It, oh, yeah, I think it was. He's like, it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride. So already... I don't know that these straps are already fitting. Like, I already feel like I'm pretty well acquainted with these straps that are, like, in the lower parts and didn't want to be more, uh, like, acquainted with them. So I have to jump off of this zip line as I do it. This, like, brawny mountain man is, like, at the bottom, like, pumping the thing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He's, like, pumping the thing up and down. Every time he hits that pump, like, I was at third base, like, every single time so i was like please stop like but like not good third base like really painful third base <laughs> so i don't know if that's making any sense like this is this is your boyfriend is drunk and it's the first time after high school prom this isn't like you're you're a french lover of <laughs> like you're missing seducing young <laughs> it's like wow you're, yeah yeah, that's exactly what it was like. So that actually hit my low light list, Rob, even though the, the first part of that was good. I will say from a serious perspective, I mean, that was serious. Yeah, Carrie's like a viral TikTok sensation now because of her whale pics. I have some really good whale pics that were out there. Saw this beautiful, beautiful whale breach like five inches from the boat. Most amazing experience. Um, whale watching, 10 out of 10. If you can ever go do that, like you would love that. Just so amazing. Um, Super important question. Yes. Did your your TikTok video that went really wide, did you submit that under your own private information or as the website? I <laughs> don't know what that means. And I also don't do, have- Do, a, do a, we get the social oh, cloud for it? No, it was on Is my the personal. website in which I have a financial investment as opposed to your own personal life in which I have no investment at all? I, <laughs> I see. Asking. Well, I wasn't looking for fame and fortune, but I did get it. It was a real- Rob, you know, I would never go on TikTok. It was a reel, my first reel, and it was a viral sensation because it literally was amazing. So it was a it was a good viral, not like the bad kind of viral. That's a trick. Um, not the kind that you probably caught from those straps on the zip line. <laughs> for like more than you know, more than you know. It like lacerated my pants. <laughs> it was just so bad. Um, so whale watching. And then on top of it, I will say going through Glacier Bay and seeing all of the glaciers melting away um, was a bit of that a brought high. That brought Car- <laughs> Carrie a real, lot of joy. A real high. Seeing, seeing high climate change hood. firsthand. First Did hand. you get to like watch a polar bear just swim and swim until it <laughs> Until it went into the water. Did yes. That I did that see that. That, that, that was actually, sad. you know what Tim would have enjoyed? Even though you're more of a cat person, Tim, I know you're just an animal lover, um, holding the little dog sled, uh, the dog sled puppies. That was oh, I to- well, my favorite breed of um of yeah. dog are uh, are huskies. So yeah, I uh, enjoyed that. Very they're much. a different husky than you think. These are Alaskan huskies, so they're a little bit different. I learned about that on this trip, but right. also amazing. I'm going to tell you my low light. Something that I have similar to Rob and the indigenous person slash napkin not been able to let go of, and I mean this very seriously. You're going to think I'm joking, but I can't let it go. <sighs> Where do I even begin? So. We're on the flight home. We've made it through this entire trip. There's been ebbs and flows. There's been peaks and valleys. We're on this way home. We get to the airport. We get there. I order the kids some food from Qdoba. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need to have any more food. I'm very full from this trip. But secretly, I'd stretched out my stomach so much from this trip that I really wanted a burrito. And then I end up ordering this food for the kids. I order the perfect burrito, but for Alice. Okay. So yeah, I'm still mad about this. I can feel myself sweating. Rob's laughing, but it's true. We get onto the plane. I look over. Alice is eating the burrito. I'm fully expecting to get half, at least half of this burrito. She barely eats anything. So she eats half the burrito. She's like, I think I'm going to save it. I'm like, okay, okay. You hold on to that burrito. That's that's okay. You eat until you're full. She's like, yeah, I'll save it. A couple minutes later, she's like, come back. I'm like, are you done with the burrito? If you're finished, you can just hand me the burrito. And she's like, I think I'm going to have a few more bites. 
So she has a few more bites. Now I'm down to a fourth of the burrito, but I'm still like, all I need is a fourth to just like get me through this flight. Fourth of the burrito is left. I look over. I look at Rob just as I'm about to say, can I have the burrito? He puts it in the garbage. They were coming around collecting. Rob, can I, can I remind? Like, I've been si- I've been waiting like two hours can I for this burrito. So, so you were upset because your husband didn't allow you to have a, a half-eaten two-hour-cold Qdoba burrito. Yeah, but I actually said, hey, Rob, is she done with the burrito? And then he looks at me and is like, no, not yet. So you knew that I'd indicated interest in the oh, burrito. I just thought you were curious if she's eaten. Um, I'd like to also remind you of the four legs of the four hour each flights. No, no, get, no, no, no. Who, this who sat with the children? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah. Can't who do that. Who got solo this, seats? This isn't a, yeah. a match for match kind of thing. And number two, <laughs> you could have sat next to my sister. Did you want to do that? That's a good point. Yeah. So also, just, I know that you said there. that I would think you were joking and you weren't, but here's how I know you were joking is because you said I ordered the perfect burrito from Qdoba, which is just obviously not a possibility. Uh, Are you more of a Chipotle person? I'm more of a go to an actual Mex- Mexican yeah. restaurant fair. and get good food yeah. person. That's fair, but it even had the impossible meat in it. Ah, <laughs> ah you're selling me. <laughs> it's just so bad. I literally you had thought, a vegan Qdoba burrito that I, you were that upset I, to not was, be able to eat ice cold with your daughter's spit all over I it. I even I don't do this often, but I even dropped Rob an air swear. He was oh, like yeah. across the way, yeah, and I was, was really mad. I was really mad. I looked at him. I was like, <laughs> "That was something that was very exciting to our podcast audience." Yeah, I'm sure. I know, but you know what it is, and so he knew at the time too, and it was a big problem. I brought it up after we got off the plane too. Still mad about it. Well, Tim, one thing we did get to do on on the ship is watch many films. Not that's not true. Watch few films on repeat for seven days straight. So I'm not going to include any of those and worth mentioning, but they were in no particular order. Jungle Cruise, How, How to, to Train, Train Your, Your Dragon. Dragon, Black Widow. Yes. Was there uh, Mitchell's versus the Machines? On loop. We saw those on loop and that's all our kids wanted to do while they were on the boat. That pretty, sounds <laughs> pretty horrible. much. Um, it's, yeah, it's, you know, the quality mileage may vary on the quality of those, but yeah, after 10 hours or 10 Top times. Top Gun seeing, came on at one point. At one point. That was a late night show. We, they, they made it through an hour of that and it, it's a little, yeah, a little it's, racy. Yeah. It's not as good as the, the Maverick. I Agreed. really got to say. It's, yeah. it's not, it's yeah. just not. But we did manage to squeeze in some other movies a little bit before the trip and after the trip. Kara, what are you interested in bringing to the table there well, we, or chatting about? I wanted to bring Thor, Love and Thunder. All right. Whose movie uh, anticipated list was that on? Was that yours, Rob? I don't think I, I... It was for sure on Rob's. I'm trying to remember yeah. if it was on both of yours, but, it, but based on the way you're talking, Carrie, again, it was not on yours. I, but you know what? That's not 100%. Uh, let's find out. Real, let's, I've really got the lists in front of me. I can I can confirm. Uh, you both had Thor, Love, wow. and Thunder. It was God, Carrie's number it. four. It was Rob's number three. So now you're going to be more positive about it, huh? I mean, it's a five-star movie. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh and what do i i feel like what i missed the conversation on a few of these and uh i've I, I saw since like haven't talked about it haven't posted about it but i saw they slash them bodies 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 the wretched nope thor love and thunder the day shift and men in black since i don't think the day shift has gotten much coverage on the site yet uh maybe someone's a tap to review I that i don't i don't think anyone on the site has talked about it i don't think it was really i, think, I think i'll cover that one okay yeah that one was was it was uh was a treat of of sorts and tim because of your chaotic week do you yeah, want to jump I, in on I tragically uh those who have been following the website and not seeing my name pop up on it those who have been potentially waiting for the new incarnations of uh summer blood and blockbuster history uh those who follow me on letterboxd are aware i have been slacking like a motherfucker i think all but one of the movies i've watched in the last seven days is a short film starring charlie chaplin <laughs> well the good news because is I, I have been i have been grinding away at my dissertation so i'm not just like faffing off doing nothing i i want to apologize to everyone who reads the site uh that i am not good enough as a graduate student to be a graduate student and a film critic simultaneously, as it turns out. But that will be changing very soon. The good news is you haven't missed like hardly anything at the box office, right? Well, like, I still haven't seen Bullet Train, Bullet which Train. I want to see. Bullet Train and Beast, I guess, are the only two things that have really released. Yeah. Note. I mean, there's also, well, Beast didn't even go to number one at the box office. But uh, I, I confess, even though I do my number one at the box office thing. I'm not going to fucking see the new Dragon Ball movie. I'm just not. That, would be that, be, that was the number one movie? <clears throat> By almost twice. 
It like made twenty million in Beast made eleven. I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in seeing Beast care. Have you seen have you seen the trailer? <clears throat> Isn't it uh who's it about? What's Idris it about? Elba. Idris Elba fights a lion. It's a lion. You know, you know I like Idris Elba. I know. And I like lions. Mm-hmm. It he, sounds like a no brainer to me. Does he play a superhero in it? He plays, he plays a, a father, dad. And, that and is who's a, a bigger yeah. superhero than a dad? All right. Well said. I mean <laughs> I can think of a You know few why people. the lion's pissed? Why? Didn't share half the Qdoba with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what, though? Then I'm going to be on that lion side, for <laughs> sure. For sure. I hope he claws his eyeballs out. Um, so, I want to point out, Rob, didn't share a quarter of Qdoba. A quarter, yeah. A quarter. That's where all the good stuff is. Once you like smush it all into the end, into the little Quarter bottle. of a room temperature Qdoba impossible meat burger. Wow, this box so office bad. number is crazy to me. This is insane. Okay, 20 million for Dragon Ball Z and 11 million for Beast. Crazy. Anyway, go ahead, Karen. All right. Thor, Love and Thunder, my fourth most anticipated movie of the summer. Was very excited about it based on the trailer. I thought the trailer was really funny, cute, had some like really hilarious little bits in it. I also <coughs> love the soundtrack in the... Uh, Ragnarok? The, in the Ragnarok. Wait, which one are you talking about? In Love and Thunder. Oh, okay. Love and Thunder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, which one did we see? Um, but... Uh, I don't feel like there was much more outside of the trailer in terms of the funny bits. Like, I feel like they captured a lot of the funny bits in the trailer. Um, and then for whatever reason, I didn't note the soundtrack. I thought it had like that, like eighties vibe, like do, 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 you know, that song. That's the HBO introduction. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, it's, thank you, Rob. It's like, wait, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. I know that's a thing. Yeah. And so I was Dude, like, it's the it? one where like the star field and you like move through it's the It's my o. favorite. That's why I remember it. I it's knew really I was good. getting quality when, when that thing came on. Yeah. But it wasn't anywhere to be found in this movie. So that was upsetting. Um, so in general, let me tell you a little bit about it and what I like. No, but there I are like seven different Guns N' Roses songs. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I don't know. It wasn't that prominent. It didn't jump out to me at the, at the same beats as it did in the trailer. I don't know. No, the Guns N' Roses didn't work for me very well. It actually took me back to kind of like more because ACDC, like it made me think of Iron Man whenever those uh, Guns, Guns N' Roses songs came on. And then they also made a like a little or not a little but a joke of the one kid wanted to be called axel oh yeah you know, I oh know. i get That's it right. yeah yeah I, I get it i get it um, I, I get it i just don't think it was funny no yeah a lot of the funny bits i think that they're going for fall a little bit flat for me in this one but i'll tell you what it's about so there's this guy named gore okay and he i've never heard of him before or seen him before but he is sort of a wanderer in the night um and he comes upon a god Okay, very early on, this isn't a spoiler, he comes upon a god, he's looking for this god to save him. And they've all like followed him for years, and the gods haven't given back, but they still like pray to these gods that they're going to come and save them. And he has the realization that like, you know, and, no one's going to save you. And what very crucially happens shortly before he meets the god? His, is that a spoiler? That's like first part two. It happens movie. in the literal first scene of the movie. Okay, his daughter passes away. His his daughter that passes hard. away. That was tough to watch. That horribly, horribly, yeah. horribly. She, she dies of thirst in the desert. You know what that reminded me of? Yeah. Damn you, Gavin. Yeah. Damn you, Gavin. Graves Gavin. of the Fire. Yeah, Graves. Of yeah. The Firefly. Yeah. yeah, it did. Although for whatever reason, less sad than Graves of the Fire. But anyway, okay. um, still sad. So he's pissed because his daughter's died. His whole family's died. Everybody's died basically except Gore. He's still hanging around, but he's not looking great. Like his skin's a little like he's, he's dry. got desert sun skin. Yes, he say. does have deserty skin. And so he comes in thinking he has all this faith in this person and he finds out like gods really aren't here to help you. And he goes on a God killing rampage. And so he's like, I'm coming for all the gods. And so he becomes God the butcher or he's like God butcher. Gore, Gore, Gore the God butcher. Gore the God butcher. Sorry, it's a tongue twister who he wants to make them extinct, which, you know. Maybe there's some merits in that. Maybe not. You can decide when you see the I movie. I actually think very sympathetic villain. I agree. And I, I, I don't know what Taika Waititi's, and or I don't know how close it follows Gore's comic book origins, um, but it is it is something I think, I think you know, maybe the, you know, if you- He's got a point, maybe. Maybe there's a point there. Yeah. I don't know. You can, you can decide. But- I will say- well, I'll let you continue and then I will jump in. No, I just realized when I walked away, I was like, I really like this. Like, I really enjoyed it. And then I've sat with it for about 24 hours. And I'm going to be really honest. I know you won't find any offense in this, Rob. I walked away feeling good. And then I think if I'm being really true to myself, I realize that it's mostly because I have the hots for Chris Hemsworth. 
Mm. I think that's actually it. So that that uh, that zip. You do you do see Chris Hemsworth in this movie? Yes. It's not. It's not the worst. We spent some time with his torso. It's not the best butt. Oh really? Oh, see, it worked for me. It worked. It's a it's a it's a satisfactory butt. Wait, so do you think it was too big, too small? Just. It was it was not an exceptional butt. They actually make I think really? I think I wonder if it's a written in joke because uh, Chris Hemsworth gets made fun of about how tiny uh, his legs are, uh-huh. and uh, they specifically joke uh, Korg is that the name yeah, of the rock of the person? rock man yeah uh, when he when uh, Thor is getting back into shape uh, they even mention like and he's someone who doesn't miss a leg day and I wonder if that was like a little bit of self self jokiness because yeah that there's been those images of Chris Hemsworth like skinny. That's the he thing. Just I don't think he has. Body. I don't think he has a small butt or small legs. I just think his top is so so massive. Like I think if you put a regular top on him, it matches bottom. Mm-hmm. But like I mean, to me that bottom, I'm gonna do like a hand gesture here. To me that you it, can cup it. You could cup it. I you want a butt. It. You can cup. Mm. Like if it's flat, I it's I, there's nothing against flat butts. But so on a scale well. of. Thor Ragnarok, yes, being on top, I assume for you, yeah, and Thor: The Dark World. Where is this? Middle. It's in the middle. Yes, so above Thor: The Dark World. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, Would I'm, you say the same? I, yeah, I think so. I think maybe even uh, I like it better than the first Thor, except Loki was uh, was very enjoyable as the villain in the first one. Have you seen this, Tim? I have seen this. <clears throat> I would also put it at the second of the four Thors. With the caveat that I think the first two Thors are not good, and I, I frankly didn't like this very much either. Uh, and, and the thing I was going to say that I decided to hold off on, uh, for me, there's kind of a, a just macro level problem is that the film opens with this scene that you described, Carrie, <clears throat> of uh, Gore played extremely well by Christian mm-hmm. Bale, um, suffering immensely and having this very righteous anger that he sort of funnels into this murderous rage. Uh, it is a great scene. I think it's one of the most emotionally like resonant scenes there's been in a Marvel film in a while. Uh, it is not a scene that sets up absolutely anything in the rest of the movie because, I mean, it sets up his backstory, but this is not a harrowing movie about suffering and dead children. It's a very, very jokey Taika Waititi film that I just found did not survive having that opening scene that is almost totally free of humor. Yeah, It's like yeah, the opening scene is basically just like watching Christian Bale exude this this pain yes. for eight minutes and like at the end of that I, I don't know where to go I, I don't know how to downshift back to like the rock man making jokes about about Thor's and, butt and, and I know? think Taika struggles with that I, I don't I think you actually liked uh, Jojo Rabbit right Kara? I did yeah I think I think Taika has some challenges when when I think Taika wants to be able to do both yeah have the cake and eat it too um, and I just don't think it it works as well um yeah, it's kinda, a good comparison, actually, though. I kind of would have enjoyed just a Gore the God Butcher film, to be honest. Honestly, yeah. I, a serious Gore the God Butcher film would have probably really done it for me. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, I'll only only other thing to say, I'm not going to spoil any of the cameos, but there's some really fun ones in here, too. Are they fun? I mean... Is the Italian accent fun? Nah, it's Russian. I think it's a Russian accent. We won't... See, I thought even, oh. that wasn't even the cameo I thought you were going for. I thought you were going for, oh. remember how in Ragnarok... Yes. yes, Matt Damon has a cameo. Yes. That one too. And now they're like, well, if you like the Matt Damon cameo, you're going to like the Matt Damon cameo with like seven other cameos plastered on top of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. But one in particular caught me off guard. I will say, not expected, okay. and okay. was happy with the outcome of that character's outcome. So, oh, you're talking. Okay, you're talking. Yeah. Okay, I'm I, talking I, about I, Zeus. Oh, you oh yeah, that's, Zeus. Oh, that's we can talk about that one. That was in the trailers. Yeah, that's in the trailers. They were, they, they were selling that cameo. Oh, they were. They were. I w- I didn't see that, so I was surprised to see Russell Crowe. Yeah, that and, I really Italian, like, I thought he was the second best performance in the movie. With an, a, with an Italian accent, he was Russian. He was, he was like, Greek. Oh, that is that was supposed not- to be a Greek accent? <laughs> He's supposed to be Zeus. It's so it's bad. Greek. It's, it's the worst Italian. accent I've ever it's, heard. It's a terrible accent, and I think it's deliberately a You terrible know what's accent. funny, Care that Care likes that so much? Did you Do you know who Hercules is played by at the end? Kevin Sorbo? Uh, no. Um, well, that is, that's, wow, that's very good that you just had that handy. <laughs> yeah. That is uh, Roy from Ted Lasso. What? Yeah. Wait, hang on, wait, wait. 
Wait, hang on. Back me up. I didn't actually follow who you were talking about. Hercules. Hercules. In the post credit scene. In the post credit scene, Zeus is healing his wound. He came back from what apparently was just like a little scratch through the chest. I did not like even notice. I was chest. already cleaning up our mess at the seat and trying to take that everything to the garbage. That was Roy. He got notified like three weeks out that he's going to be Hercules. He's like, I need to do some push-ups immediately. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know I love Roy Kent. I know you do. That's amazing. So you'll get to probably see Hercules coming after Thor. That'll be fun. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, let's go. I, we've talked a lot about this. Let's go on to the next movie that we should see, which is yours, Rob. Carrie, you and I try to stay healthy, right? You know, I mean, I try to exercise most days. I eat a lot of egg whites and kale until about 4 p.m. And then I'm just chips and dip until bedtime. Same. And and like you care, packing all the healthy stuff in meals to try to reach my goals hasn't worked. And, you know, I hate taking vitamins and pills. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Athletic Greens AG1 has the answer. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus and aging. All the things. Mm, but here's the thing. It sounds great, but it also sounds like it tastes kind of healthy. No, it actually tastes great. Not healthy. It has a like a tropical flavor that makes me think of our upcoming trip to the Caribbean. And it will leave you feeling more alert and clear during the day. Also helps you get your Z's. You know I can use all those things, but Rob, you also know I'm a little bit cheap. So how much would something like this set us back? Care, it's cheap enough even for you. Whoa! <laughs> AG1 is less than $3 a day, so you're investing in your health instead of that cold brew habit. Okay, all right. Sign me up. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash emerging. That's E-M-E-R-G-I-N-G. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I don't know if you should see it. It, it was breezy. Uh, the Day Shift, it's a Netflix original film. Um, I would say in the vein of bright, but Oy. good. Like okay. better. Like there there are definitely, I think aesthetically, Tim, you may have some challenges with it. It is like, it is lit like, like orange. Like when they... I guess Bright was like that too. Any anywhere where a director like wants to shoot Los Angeles, and they make it that like burnt orange throughout the entire entire film. Like it doesn't look awesome, but it has some really funny moments by Dave Franco. Like all of Dave Franco's one, well, Dave Franco being Dave Franco as this kind of auditor. Okay, let me set up the story. It is <laughs> it is a universe in which vampires coexist, kind of with humans, or it does. It, it's kind of like they're the gang equivalents like they are i in, feel in like hiding. your vacation has caused you and carrie to transfer your ability to synopsize movies <laughs> it's really hard to describe the what the universe is but uh, day shift has um vampires and humans living together however the vampires live in like in hiding and they're criminals this mostly. This is really, really painful. Is this what it's I, like when I do it? Yeah. This Except is it's it's more charming when you do it. Oh, yeah. I don't, okay. I don't. It's really hard to describe. So anyway, so Jamie Foxx plays this blue collar kind of vampire killer because you get money for their teeth depending on how old they are. Maybe it's the, prob the problem. The problem is the movie. I watched this. You watched with a you. portion of it. So I they coexist it. with humans, but they live in hiding and are also hunted, hunted for their teeth. Hunted for teeth, and there's like legit ways of hunting if you're part of this union that Jamie Foxx is trying to get back into. But because of uh, Jamie Foxx's kind of ragtag approach and you know not following the rules, um, was kicked out of the union, but is given a second chance by Snoop Dogg, uh, who. <laughs> I'm really not selling this movie. <laughs> no. Um, you, you are making it sound so bad. <laughs> so bad. You just dropped Snoop here's, Dog. Here's the oh reason to see this movie is I like vampires and they get contortionist. So if you liked Malignant and you like the visual stylings of the people who uh, do all of the practical effects in Malignant, 
there will be something for you here with day shift. And if you like, see, that's all you had to say. Okay. That that's that. what I should. Instead of like the world building makes no sense. And it's an ugly Brown version of Los Angeles yes. and Snoop Dogg is in it. <laughs> yeah. The Snoop Dogg pieces were awful. I actually find Dave uh, Franco quite humorous. Um, and he plays like a very by the book auditor who's sent along with Jamie Foxx to make sure Jamie Foxx is following the code of the union. Um, it's and, silly. It's silly. You know, yeah, it's silly. But the contor- the vampire contortionist, Carrie kept saying like, oh, this has got to be CGI. I'm like, I don't think so. Like, this is like, that's a person doing that. It's literally somebody's esophagus is pressed to a solid floor. And it's like the legs are touching the floor, but over their head. But also like, it'd be like laying your kneecap on the floor, but from over your head. If you can picture, I can demonstrate if you need me to. Sweet grabs, we'll, sweet we'll do pills. That. We'll do that after we're done recording. Do that later. I just, I was just laughing because it, it, it was probably the experience you all had watching Malignant, except this movie, I, I like, I think knew that it was bad. <laughs> it's hard to know. say. It's okay. hard to say. I would pass on this one unless you're... You didn't even watch the whole thing. I did. The only thing I will say that's positive... So she is, would pass on this one. I would so she's pass. not lying. I would pass out. I would try to force yourself into sleep like I did. But the only thing I will say is really, really fun gore effects. Like there were a lot of okay. effects in here where I was like, ooh. Like despite the, the bad spent, acting... They spent some money. There was some money in this movie spent, in the effects. Gore Netflix. effects and contortionists. Yep. Yeah. There's a movie here that you can sell me on very easily. And I don't know why you tried so hard to not sell me on it. Should have been me. Should have been me. I just don't. I, this is, I, I can't imagine Netflix is going to keep putting so much money into these things. That, like this could have actually made some money in theaters uh, a little bit, like made some money back. Anyway, $7. Before we head to our break, you might be wondering about ways to support the show. Get early access and exclusive content. Make us watch a movie. Pick your own episode topic and more from our Patreon site, much like Gavin did yeah. for this episode. Uh, we've been having some merch sales. Merch sales continue. Um, be on the lookout for those opportunities to save money uh, from T Publix, which is where we have our merch through. Uh, Brennan's or pay full price. Oh, oh, we'll full let price. That too. We, yeah. we don't mind. We do not mind whatsoever. Carrie, uh, I understand we had a review. Oh, we did. We did. And this review comes to us, and we thank you so much for it, from Dom of the Dead. Oh, I like it. Do you like, like that? It. Yeah. It's kind of like a movie pun. I am not a huge movie bug, but I think they meant to say buff mm-hmm. and that I had a typo. So I am not a huge movie buff, but this podcast provides some great reviews, particularly when I'm debating whether or not to watch a movie. Two thumbs up and two big toes. Thank you so much for your review. And you guys can go out there and leave those for us too on iTunes. We love reading those and they just make us feel good. They give us special endorphins. Or dopamine? Yeah. What does that give us? Endorphins is a thing. It can be both. Yeah. We, we get Thanks. both. We get endorphins and dopamine from it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Also want to thank all of our listeners who support the show and make their Amazon purchases through our site. Doing it easy. Just go to our website, alternateending.com. Click on our Amazon banner and seamlessly go about your purchases. All proceeds go to making our show better. Since our last episode, here are the things that were purchased. Someone getting ready for the holidays. What is it? Vintage Christmas cookbook. Not, we're, we have like I four holidays that are coming before that. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta prep. <sighs> I'm not. Really you, gotta, you never you never ever ever make something for a major holiday as the first time you've made it. You always make a test version of it first in case you screw it up. Ugh, I never do that. And care here's a book that you would like with all your melting uh, uh, glaciers. Glaciers is the heat is on book. The climate crisis, the cover up, oh, and the great. prescription. Great. No, it's a real thing, Rob. We should get that book too. We should. Yeah. Clothing. You know what helps climate change? Going on a cruise. Yeah. We're, we got off the boat. <laughs> flying we... flying on a four leg flight to get to go on your cruise. <laughs> we yes. are planting trees and donating. But so. at least you ate the fucking vegan burrito. <laughs> I did it. It's in the garbage. Stop it's also it wasted. Yeah, it's in the garbage. You wasted, wasted it. Yeah. I was going to repurpose that foil that it was in due and we bring laugh, it home. But oh. we are very much into carbon taxing and offsetting our carbon footprint, which is very large. Yeah, yes. we have a we have a footprint. Yes. I don't even own a car. I feel completely sanguine about my use of energy. Oh, my God. Also had some clothing and accessories purchased. One pop funk Star Trek recruit baby onesie. Ooh, I know Mandy. who that is. Is yeah. that Mandy? For I sure. don't know. For sure. 24 if it, months. If it's not Mandy, I hope Mandy is listening to this and has chosen to purchase one. Yeah. I agree. We also had toddler kids, little boys, fashion, cotton crew socks, little, oh. little socks. Do you want another kid? No, just no. just, 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 just for the socks. Just for reading the socks. Just yeah. for the socks. That's how I feel about yeah. it. It's just the socks. We also had a 
uh, Lorelei X6 over ear headphones with the microphone so that you can chat while listening. I could, that's probably for gaming, actually. Could be for gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Also had a precision fusing mat, includes non slip mat with see through design. Uh, very nice. So I, I, it's like a bath mat or potentially like a but kitchen why mat. Actually, so you said something about fusing. I suspect, and I don't know, uh, I suspect that might be a quilting thing. Oh. Okay. Or, or in some other sort of like seamstressy type thing. Okay, very mm-hmm. nice. Also had a collapsible portable indoor tripod closed drying rack. That's very nice. You need when that. You're, I love When you're trying to like create, <clears throat> eliminate space try to, issues. Try to explain how laundry's done, Rob. I don't know. Yeah. I know. Because well, I'll tell you what my thing is. I have a ton of sweaters. And your know, tw- sweaters get a little <clears throat> a little musty, a little funky. Yes. You get, you know, your your food, your, your whatever, your, your hot dog bun on them or I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> and you got to wash them. <laughs> Every time you get that hot dog bun on there, you gotta, you know, you gotta wash it up. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> just take your hot dog and just wipe it up and down your body like a loofah. <laughs> uh, anyway, you gotta wash that sweater, and I do this uh, usually twice a winter. Uh, but then, you, so you hand wash using the the wool light, you know, the delicate. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But then it says dry flat, and I don't yes. have a means to dry flat, and I need one of those racks so I can dry flat. Yes, there you go. Yes. I completely agree. Well, if for those who read books, we also had a neck reading light. I don't know if you wrap that around your neck. I don't think that, that doesn't seem safe. I don't know. Yeah. That's I'm going to neck. I assume, I assume it's like one of those neck pillows, but it has a light built onto it. Oh, that would be. That that's would make super sense. cool. That's really, that's like a good gift idea for anybody who how reads. About, how about this? An oil diffuser, diffuser bracelet. So it like releases a little aromatherapy. I love that too. That's well, that's that's a good idea. Copy Send me this list. It's a back to school. We had a trapper keeper. Care remember those? Uh, they still had trapper keepers. Yeah, this was a this was God a trapper keeper. Purchase. Did you have the five star trapper I, keeper? I went five star. Yeah, I, I needed the name brand. Uh, of course you did. I always got the cheapy one that would always break, but then I ha- wouldn't be able to get a new one, and the zipper didn't work, and it would break, and I'd have to, all my books would fly all over the place and papers. It's very sad, sad, tragic story that I <laughs> that I had. <laughs> That is terribly Let me cheer you up with some more kids' clothes. We also had some short sleeve graphic tees for a 2T, oh. a pack of three there, swimsuit trunks, oh, little ones going must in the be water. In war- it's getting cold. Yeah. And then in a pajama set oh. with cars on it. Oh, with little cars? Little, little cars. Is there a picture? No, no pictures. Ah. This will bring joy to, to Tim. Someone got uh, the Young Girls of Rochefort and the Umbrellas of Shareport, the Criterion Collection. Someone has good taste. And then to top that off, Rented Internal Affairs, which I have yet to see, but I've heard is very good. Which which is coming to the Criterion Collection. It was just announced this past week. Well, there you go. And when we get back, our thoughts on the Billy Jack series. Welcome back to Alternating. We're talking about the Billy Jack series, running four movies thanks to our Patreon, uh, Gavin McDowell. Some of the movies being longer than three hours, Gavin. I don't think any of them are longer than three. I think the longest one is about three. About three hours. About three hours. But you know what? I'm I'm being very positive about this. I feel like there was a reason to Mm -hmm. see these. And I think it had nothing to do with the movies themselves because the making of these movies, as I looked into it, was actually quite interesting. Uh, the director and writer and star, uh, what's his name? Tom, Tom Laughlin. Tom Laughlin. A uh, very interesting character. Very Is interesting he? character. Is he? You yeah. know who's not an interesting character? Who's that? Billy Jack. Billy Jack. <laughs> But I'm sorry, you're trying to be positive. Ooh, you, you were sitting talking. there, you, you were thanking Gavin. You were like, oh, think, Gavin I, introduced I think, us to these movies. And I, I think, think Carrie and I need why, you to take the lead. Why is this movie in the zeitgeist, Tim? Wait, I, I still don't know what that means. I know. What does that mean? Zeit, zeitgeist is German for the spirit of the times. Oh. Yeah. Like, why does it still remain here? Why Why do people know? Like, what is this? You, you knew about it. What did you know about it going in? So it is a four film series. Those four films are The Born Losers, which was written second, actually. It came out in 1967. Uh, Tom Laughlin had written the original Billy Jack, could not get anyone interested in it. uh, So he retrofitted the character of Billy Jack into a biker exploitation film, which biker exploitation was sort of a big, hot exploitation genre in the mid to late 60s. 
Uh, it gives us such things as Easy Rider, for example. And The Born Losers did pretty well. It did well enough to encourage um, some money people to be like, okay, maybe there's there's some legs in this Billy Jack figure. Uh, and so Billy Jack got made and then the original distributor pulled out and then a second distributor pulled out and eventually got distributed by Warner Brothers. And it made some money, but then Tom Walkland himself sort of spearheaded a re-release. And I believe, um, so that came out in 71. I think the re-release was in 73. And the re-release made just a an amount of money that that is hard to comprehend. It was <laughs> it was the highest grossing indie film of all time. Yeah, I believe into the 1990s. Wait, which one? I, I think until 2000. The, se- the second one, just, just plain Billy Jack. Billy Jack. Yeah. Okay. It's it's. A, I, a, I think it was finally passed by Blair Witch. Yeah. Oh, okay. That what? then that that holds true. Yeah. That's it's bonkers. Care it's bonkers. Not only that, um, th- by all accounts, this Tom Laughlin character. I mean, just larger than life. Is he in the movie? He's 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 Billy, Billy Jack. Jack. Tom Laughlin is Billy Jack. Yeah, I don't oh think yes. based on my research. You, you might not have realized this, Carrie. Billy Jack is not actually played by a half Native American. <laughs> That's I, what I was going to say. I wasn't going to make that call, Tim, because who knows? Who knows is really the anyone to that. with eyeballs, Carrie. <laughs> I wasn't here's, sure. Here's the interesting thing about Tom Laughlin, and Tom would not succeed well in today's Hollywood. Um, yeah, how have these not been canceled? He, he didn't succeed well in the '70s Hollywood. He had to go outside of the Correct. system to make his yes, that's, his that's, that's, all, that's true. He was he was he didn't succeed either in either case, but certainly not in today's world. He is someone who is an activist um, who I think I think in spirit has the right thing that they want to say and do, but they do it in the wrong way. He is clearly so the context. Do we want to talk about the movies? Do we want to talk about the making of? Do we want to talk about uh, the social context? All three of these need to be talked about. I think, what we, order first, do we, want to talk about I think we have to start with quickly what are each of these movies about? And then let's okay. just quickly jump out of that. Well, since you since you suggested that Carrie, I'll let you be the one who's giving us the plot synopses. righty. Well I'm gonna bring you my Billy Smack. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. I've been saving that for this whole episode. Really? I that's did. What, that's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I like it. it was like funny. smack talk, you know? And now it doesn't even feel like it works anymore. More like more like smelly jack. Smelly. <laughs> born losers, born care. Losers. Born losers. Okay, born losers. I also want to point out something that's a little bit of a mm, I don't know, maybe an Easter egg, maybe a little factoid you didn't know. So this is also written uh by Elizabeth James. Elizabeth James plays the uh, what's what's the best way to call her? She plays the uh, bikini damsel in distress on the bike. Mm-hmm. Do you know who I'm talking about? Sure. That is also a co-writer on this movie. The, right. I think uh, T- Tom used a lot of fake names or pen names uh, for both directing and uh, writing. So he actually he did not direct any of these films under his own name. Yeah. Wait. So what's his real name? No, his real name is Tom Laughlin. He didn't. He he's never credited that way. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think he was when I looked it up. It was like this is directed by Tom Laughlin. Well, well, we all know that to be the case. If you look in the movies at the credit sequences, he does not appear as the director by that name. I see. What does he go by? Uh, T S some, something. Yeah, I don't know. He goes by some Thomas. T C Frank. T C. Interesting. Interesting. I could see why you'd want to hide from this. I can see. So. Oh, he did um, not though. He did not then. <laughs> So and okay. I, I will say before you start telling us what happens to the born losers to his credit. Yes. And I think Carrie, you and I are not going to be giving him very much credit to his credit. Gavin told us that we only have to start with Billy Jack. So we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Oh, the losers as well. Okay. For which I at least partially blame myself. Cause I believe I'm the one who gave you guys the hookup for the movies. You did. And I don't think you told us that either. I don't so. think I realized that. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that in order, I actually probably like maybe, Actually, I don't, I'm not even going to rank yet. I don't even know where to start here. But um, I'll back up. Where are the to born say, losers, Carrie? The born losers. I would where are like, the born losers? Can you tell me a couple? Um, what are the words that I can't use? I want to like tease those out. Am I allowed to use the word gangbang? Is that a term that's PC still? Can you say that? I mean, I think it would be hard to describe the plot of this movie if you don't. So I think we need to let you have it. Okay. I just wanted to know before I get into this. So, all right. So there's this guy. Mm-hmm. His name is William Jack. 
Um, His name is William Jack. <laughs> William T. Jack. And I didn't realize until this. I'm sorry. I don't want to keep stepping on you. I assumed his name was like William Jack, like <laughs> Thornton or something like that. I didn't realize that Jack was his family name. It's his family name. Uh, he's descended from a long line of half Native American. He's descended. He, he's, like, he's, he's descended from a real long line of Jacks, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> he's a half Native American Vietnam vet. Yeah, who kind of lives so on wait, the outskirts of society. So is he half society. Vietnamese? No. Oh no. no. He's, oh my gosh. He, he <laughs> got damn well better to be half white. <laughs> Sorry, I realize that that's not accurate. Um. So okay, I'm already being a veteran it. of Vietnam I know, doesn't mean I just realized that, that you once lived. But he could have been. I guess yeah. But he could have been. It, it does for half of the veterans of Vietnam. That's it's true. not the half that are likely to have uh, come back to the United States in the that's, 1970s. That's that's fair. So. Basically, he's just chilling, doing his own thing, living in the mountains. But then uh, he comes down from the mountain and he sees sort of a scuffle that happens on uh, a motorbike. A guy just sort of, they get into a fight and he comes in and he steps in. And what would you call him? He's kind of like a vigilante, right? He's kind of like a vigilante. He's like a vigilante. So he can't handle the fact that everybody's too afraid to jump in and help this guy who's being can, attacked. Can I say, though, that motorist did deserve... I knew you were going to say like that. ...like an ass kicking. Like, that motorist, motorist didn't, have my, didn't have my sympathies. Um, but I'll, I'll let that slide. We'll let it slide. Um, in a in a short way of saying, comes in, tries to like take the, the, the law into his own hands, which the law isn't particularly thrilled about, but he still does it anyway. He tries to beat up all these people who have these very oversized sunglasses on, and they look a little like kind of like bugs. I don't know if you guys got that same vibe. Everybody kind of looked like bugs riding around. But then it sort of layers in another subplot story where there's this woman that I mentioned earlier played by the writer. And she comes around, she's just riding around in a white bikini and a little bit of a skirt. And I don't even know what happened after this. She like, they want her to be like their biker mama. She ends up in like a biker gang, but then she's like, okay, I'm going to fake be your biker mama. But then, so just just so you it. know, you may or may not be up on your 60s slang. Okay. Wait, uh, can, can, a biker mama uh-huh. does not, her job is not to be a mother figure to a biker gang. She does not make them cookies. She does not read them stories. Uh, mama at this time was sort of a nickname for one's wife. Okay. So the biker, the biker mama's job was to be the ready sexual partner for whichever male member of the biker gang at that point in time wished to have uh, intercourse. Oh, all right. P and V intercourse specifically. P and V. Yes. Penis and vagina. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who says that? Is that another 60s term? No one this, this says was P really, and this V. This was a really hard film to watch. I'll be honest. Like the, the, it has rape, obviously, in it. Um, it's super rapey. It sure does. Like, everything's and rapey. Like, this one re- and the following ones after it. Yeah, and I this definitely to had that, that 70s kind of last house on the left kind of, fe- like, ickiness to it for me. Um, it was shot very poorly. Um, it also had Walking Tall vibes, uh, which I'm sure Walking Tall is somewhat inspired by. Well, by Walking Tall comes from the same sort of cultural stew pot that made yeah. this film, yes. Yeah. But Carrie, so 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 she's feeling. a biker mama, which again does not mean, mama, would you sign my letter to the teacher so I don't have to go to school? It's mama, take your clothes off, yeah, so I can I can penetrate you, but it in a sexual fashion, which seems, I mean, that's not ideal in any situation if you're not interested in that. But based on this group that she's there with, it's extra not ideal. This isn't like. Uh, this isn't an ideal crowd that she's coming into. Again, not they're, ideal. They're born losers. They're born losers. Say. It's not ideal in any situation, but especially this situation, it's not. So um, she kind of, then it becomes about her coming in and out of that because then she has to like, she tries to escape, but then she doesn't try very well and then like ends up coming having to come back. And then it turns into, I think in this same house, they're housing lots of other women against their will. Is that fair? There's a lot of women floating around, and I don't think they want to be There's a lot there. of women, all of whom, whatever is happening to them, I think it's clear that it's not happening 
with their will. It is with all their will. So again, super And I think gross. some of them are, are underage. Yeah. yeah. Am I thinking oh. of the second one? I think that's the first one. There is some of that in, in a couple of them. So there's some underage rape stuff. I don't even like that word. It makes me cringe. It's awful. Um, but basically, she, the woman has to testify um, to, to put these guys away. And it becomes this like, I can't testify and going back and forth on that. Um, and then Billy... Billy Jack has to come back in, uh, save the day again. And then it sort of ends with, well, I won't tell you how it ends, but Billy Jack survives. We know that because he makes it into, and what does he go? Tragically he, he starts, survives. And then in the subsequent film, he, he ends up kind of working like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, like defending, uh, the freedom school, the freedom school. Holy moly. I don't know if I have the it freedom in me. School. I don't have it in me. My note in here is just sort of like the saga continues. No, that's that's your note. So, the saga continues. So the Freedom School. And, and so let's keep in mind. Yes. Born Losers, which is about how Billy Jack uses Hapkido. And he's this is a very important film in the the development of the Hapkido movie. St- Hapkido Steven being a sort of crappy looking martial art. Uh, and Tom Lawton knew it. He like studied Hapkido. So Billy Jack hap kiddos his way through this biker gang so born losers is again it's a biker exploitation it's about this biker gang that wishes to have a harem of unwilling teen girls and how billy jack hap kiddos his way through the gang until eventually the teen girls are are ready to to testify against the gang members basically uh this is not the film that that tom mufflin wanted to make he wanted to make billy jack which is the story of the freedom school which is basically this sort of multi-racial libertarian paradise school where you sort of learn how to be man and you don't you don't learn about like about like government and what the man wants you to learn you sort of learn about nature and spirituality and peace and brotherhood and and so of course the government doesn't like this the government cannot allow a a a powerful embodiment of, of the pacifist ideal like the freedom school to exist. Uh, so they try to shut it down. And so Billy Jack has to, has to have keto his way through yet more cops <laughs> to salvage, to salvage the freedom school. Uh, and this gets us then to the trial of Billy Jack, which is all of exactly what I just said. But this time Billy Jack is having spirit visions. Cause again, he's half, he's half native American and, and that's what native Americans do. They have spirit visions. You know that, right? Of oh, course. Yeah. Of course. That's how you can tell that they're a native American. They, they have when I was visions. taking my picture with the indigenous person in Alaska, <laughs> they mentioned that. Did, they mentioned did, the Billy did, Jack did, series. Did he, did he like put you on a, did you meet a spirit animal? <laughs> I do want to point out that <clears throat> the, I think the root of where um, Tom gets these ideas is Tom, prior to filming or in the sixties uh, ran one of the largest Montes- or the largest Montessori school in Can- California. So this whole idea of these, this freedom school is deeply rooted in Tom's own <coughs> personal beliefs. You yeah, know, the, the freedom school, <clears throat> excuse me, the freedom school is very much conceived of as what if Montessori schools were even less plausible as a mechanism for teaching children. Uh, is- they're very messagey. And I think that's a good beat to pause for Carrie yeah. to get back. Sorry, Alice was <clears throat> upset. I'm going to go check on her too. Sorry. Yeah. One They're minute. Very messagey. Very messagey. Very messagey. I'm sorry, Sorry, I'll be back in one second. Kid drama. Take your time. I know where I paused.
Just the one break. This right now? Well, no, well we're not calling this a break. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've had two breaks, yeah. The ten headed out. So this is the, this one. Is the and one. then the one before, because we were like, oh, we should go to a break. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Test. Okay. Sorry about that. Tim had some sibling, no sibling rivalry issues. Oh, dear. By the way, I just saw those pictures that you sent of those two dogs that you're going to be adopting. I would love to take those dogs home with us. They, Which dogs did you send? The uh, sled dogs. Oh. They're so cute. So cute. cute. Okay. Sorry to ruin your vibe. Nope. I know exactly where I left off. I I waited deliberately until I made a point. Okay. Perfect. They're very messagey and the message is clearly this sort of like post hippie. And I mean, the film was written during the hippie era, but it comes out like certainly after the hippie era has, has crusted, but it's this very hippie sort of like, we just need to create a culture outside of, of the sort of mainstream, a counter culture, if you will. Uh, and basically the movie Billy Jack and also the trial of Billy Jack, because again, they're basically the same story uh, is very much about like, what if we built a counter culture so good that it, it so profoundly threatened the mainstream culture. Uh, and we do it in the form of this, this just shockingly incompetent looking school. And, and there's so much more, so much goddamn more of the movie is about like watching the students like do their hippie classes than it is about watching Tom Lachlan have keto people. And like the Tom Lachlan have ketoing people I can deal with. The, the schoolroom scenes are, they're murder. They're brutal. They, they murdered me. <laughs> They, they murdered me even worse than Tom Lockman murders people. Well, and that's my other question, too. So I get that this is a anti-authority, you know, message movie. I totally get all of that. But then it's like, yep. are you, by painting the alternative, like the thing that you're trying to create, the school, and like, oh, yeah, this is like how things should be. And that's so god awful. Then it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be like getting behind. I, every I'm pretty scenario confident seems he didn't awful. realize that. I don't think he meant for it to be god awful. Uh, he meant for the he meant for the school to be inspiring. Yeah, he he and, he's someone who has like very strong beliefs of yeah. how things should be, which is why three times he ran for president. Who? Tom Laughlin, the man we're talking about. Billy Jack. Billy Jack, president, of, president. president of what? Though? Of the United president States. President of these United no, States. No, he yeah. didn't. I know this is a thing, and you're going to no, make me no, look no, embarrassed. No. Three times he, he ran for president, Carrie. <sighs> I think 92, what? 2004, he, he, 2008. He did not run, to be clear, on one of the two major party tickets, if you can believe that. Did he run uh, really highlighting his Native American roots? He, he lost. He <laughs> lost all three times he ran. You might you might also not be aware that that's what we're leading towards. 
He did not become the president of the United States. That's interesting. That's interesting. Do you, so wait, was he in the green party? What was he? Like was he was Ross Perot? I I think he was just running as himself. Okay. And did he use the name Billy Jack? No, he, oh, he used his, his name. name. He used his oh, okay. birth name I thought, of Thomas I just thought maybe Laughlin. people would know him more if he went as Billy Jack. He could go. Why would him. they vote for him if they knew he was Billy Jack? <laughs> That's a good question. I would have voted for him or been more likely to vote for him. So um, this is craziness to me. So who did he, who was he up against? Which presidents? He really hated George Bush. He actually ran on the, like, I think more on the liberal side. Uh, and then oh, he, he, he ran, ran as, he a ran as a, like the Democrats are too far to the right type right. Of, of left wing. But then I, I could have sure. sworn he ran on the Republican ticket uh, later Maybe. on in life. Uh, I don't know. But who knows? So and, he didn't like who, older Bush. Yeah, I don't think he would have cared for either. Bush. Older George. OK, OK. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to pinpoint when he ran he's, and he would have run He's against. a pacifist, Carrie. He wouldn't have liked the architect of the Iraq war. You can tell he's a pacifist because his movies are all about how the only way to settle problems is by killing people with your hands. This is the other <laughs> thing. Like that's where these movies make no sense. Not to even me. not even with a gun carry with your hands. With your bare hands. You snuff the life out of another human being <laughs> with your hands. With your hands like a to boy be pacifism. Fair, to yes. be fair, isn't Rambo First Blood really about pacifism as well? And we all love I that mean, movie. it's about how we should have pacified the fuck out of the Vietnamese, I guess. <laughs> I don't know even what that means. I'm laughing as a courtesy laugh. I don't know what that means. But um, I uh, this is all perplexing to me. So I'm going to research this later, figure out how many people voted for him. Is this man still alive? He died. He has passed oh, away. Gosh. And never won. Never won the he presidency. He never became president. He never even got to fulfill his greatest dream, which was to make Billy Jack five. Oh. God. So this episode could have been even longer than it is. It could have been. Instead, it ends with Billy Jack goes to Washington. And as the title implies, um, I guess he ran out of original ideas. He ran, he ran out of original ideas. He apparently ran out of original screenplays because he did not even borrow the idea yeah. of Mr. Smith goes to Washington. He basically just oh, it's copy pasted his name. Straight rip off. It. Yeah, it's a straight rip off <laughs> of it. Um, it Although, yeah. as, as was pointed out in my letterbox comments, one of the scenes in Mr. Smith goes to Washington, not present in Billy Jack goes to Washington is one where, where Jefferson Smith gets into a physical fight. So, so there are no, there's no half keto and Billy Jack goes to Washington. He's a a professional man though. Yeah. Do you know, I don't think they ever clarify what state is he the Senator of? Oh, I assume it's Texas or Arizona or New Mexico or some goddamn thing. Let's see if we can figure out where the movies are shot. I'm kind of uh, curious. Uh, I don't know, somewhere in the Southwest. Okay. Who, I, who I would imagine. Cares? I would. <laughs> I, I I'm going to go with Arizona. Let's Why go not? with Arizona. Let's say that that's true. This one, by the time I got to this point in the series, honestly, I just wanted to like throw myself into a fire, into a burning fire. It was so many hours of this movie and they had blend, blended together so much at this point that again, I just felt sort of a fury and rage okay. by Here, here's the tell more. Yes. The Born Losers is the one that has substantially more rape a lot billy jack goes to washington is the one that has no fighting billy trial of billy jack is the one where he punches jesus yes <laughs> so 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 that's your that's your quick and easy that's your your audubon field guide to the billy jack here's if you here's punch the, jesus in this movie it's the third one here's the the crazy thing tim did you know that the the billy jack goes to washington was produced by frank capra jr frank capra jr needs to be publicly humiliated yeah so that's the son of frank capra who did you uh, need mr more. smith goes to washington oh, oh okay so uh, they probably knew each other that's why who knew each well they other? were like they if they were borrowing the the screenplay and the maybe, story. maybe maybe the capra estate sued and the only reason the lawsuit was defrayed was because of a courtesy courtesy credit yeah, of credit, producer. Man. It could be. It could be. For me, it was a I again, I'm I'm not gonna say that I actually enjoyed any of these movies because I did find them to be incredibly, incredibly painful. And I think I would be more harsh on them, but I did see them about a month ago now. So like the anger has subsided. So I don't I feel a little lighter 
on it right now than I did a month ago. I have latched onto my anger like a pit bull and I have not let go of it because I wanted my <laughs> anger to be fresh and real for this episode of the podcast, Carrie. And you are now, you are now letting me down. Well, no, what I'm I, saying I knew is- Rob was going to be diplomatic because he has this whole like, oh, we can't like alienate our Patreons thing, but I thought you'd be on my side. Oh, no, 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 I will. I'm still, again, probably sending a sniper to Gavin McDowell's house. Like that's, <laughs> that's on my list of to-dos. I just haven't gotten there. It's number seven. I'm only on number three right now. After I fold some laundry, Laundry. Um, I will be hiring that sniper. But um, I feel as though, and you guys, I would love your perspectives on this too. It started really bad. Almost a worst yes, case scenario, I would say. But it got worse. So I would say for it me, did. it got from what I thought was the worst, one of the worst things, I'd say top 10 that I've ever seen in my life. But then I would say moving into the the last one, into the fourth one, that was even worse. So I would say it's almost in chronological order from worse to, to worser, I would say for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I'd love to know your guys' rankings. Yeah. I would probably be inclined to say that I think the middle two, Billy Jack and the trial of Billy Jack, I think they're they're more palatable than, to me than the born losers because they're not quite so just... Vulgar rancid yeah Yeah. like they don't have such a like there's still sexual violence but it's not like 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 it's just like marinated in sexual violence for losers is it's just such an incredibly unpleasant experience Mm -hmm. Uh, i also feel like the middle two give us a sort of more pure vision tom laughlin is is a visionary filmmaker he has an idea of how he wants the world to work he has an idea that his films can bring about that world he will present his utopian vision for us in, in a completely untainted by, by anything the money men do. And certainly the third one, Trial of Billy Jack, which is the one that's three hours long. Mm. Um, he made a goddamn big amount of money mm-hmm. from the second movie. So he basically paid for the third movie. Like that was not a movie that was made with any studio interference. That is like pure uncut Tom going on. And and as inhuman as that vision is, it is it is fascinating to see it undiluted by market pressures, shall we say? Yeah, and that and that is why I actually think that the third one of the three hour one is my favorite because it's it's just the most gonzo. And at a certain point, that's the only thing that these movies have. He punches Jesus. He punches Jesus. It's a I knew movie that where would the sell hero you. Punches Jesus, and like. What more can someone you made that someone was like, I'm going to make this movie. It's going to resonate with audiences. People will admire me for having made it. And like, that's fascinating to me. Yeah. No, I, I see your perspective. I think for me, it was just the shock value from the first one. Like at least it you was just, something. You just kept getting ground and ground and ground. Yeah. Into the ground. And I was like, I cannot see you anymore. Like I, I do not I want to spend any more time with you. I certainly think that goes to Washington is the worst for sure. Yeah. No, I, Yes. Yeah, I will agree with you on that. And it's funny because like the actual premise of what the movie could be of wrestling with being not of like being cast out of uh, maybe your 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 Native American roots and not fitting in like there there was like potential for for the concept of this like Vietnam War vet who doesn't belong in either place like trying to find their way like yeah. that 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 actually is kind of an interesting plot line you yeah because they're that's the thing for all that you know i talk about like these are pacifist movies about using violence to solve your problems the other characters do call him out on it it's like billy jack you got to stop have keto and cops to death because you're pacifists <laughs> yep. and then he's like i will and then he like Does it again. A cop to death. I, I hate to bring up roadhouse again but isn't patrick swayze a, a buddhist in that movie that's entirely recall. possible. I've yeah. seen Roadhouse once. They're redoing, they're remaking Roadhouse. I think Jake Gyllenhaal's doing, uh, playing the lead character. You you know what else Patrick Swayze is in Roadhouse? Awesome. Full blooded white man. But yes, it's also true. You, What's he supposed you know, to be playing? You know what Tom Laughlin, the actor, writer, director is? Full blooded white man. Full blooded white man. Wait, yeah. What is Patrick he's Swayze like, supposed to be playing? He's like white as hell. Yeah. No, also Patrick Swayze plays a white character. Yeah. Oh. You, know, you know what Tom Laughlin plays in the Billy Jacks? Yeah. Not a white character. Not yeah. a white character. Problematic. And he's he's like, I don't even mean problematic. I mean, he's white as shit. He's one of the <laughs> whitest dudes I've seen in my life. <laughs> it did. It was suspect, but I didn't want to judge. And like, so and like the plot is all about how he is immediately visually marked 
as a racial other and he's like fighting against this racist cop structure and it's like you look like you're from fucking sweden yeah they, they do you look like, like your name is lars yeah they and you come in an undescended line of descent from arians yeah they throw derogatory terms at him like because yeah uh, like because it's apparently it's obvious of, <laughs> of 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 his upbringing but yeah it's uh yeah it's it's a mess it's a mess of a film but it's interesting, interesting person and character. And that's why interesting I was, person. So you, you sure. said that you, you, you checked in with, with Gavin on the, was it to punish us? Was it purely to punish or was it, it was to purely to punish you two? <laughs> I was, I was the innocent bystander who was just trying to buy bagels when the shooting happened. And I ended up with bullets riddled through my skull and bagels covered in my own blood. What in the world could we have ever done to deserve this you, monstrosity? You, disres- you disrespected Studio Ghibli. I don't even know. Which, to be fair, I get it, Gavin. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> what? I love the Ghiblies. You know I love the Ghiblies. I, uh, I, I've seen at least six of them now, and I, I did like, like a couple of them enough. Mm. So that feels like I didn't deserve this. But neither here nor there. It's always good to know how bad something really can be so that I appreciate other things in my life more. Exactly. Like my we are we are in the business of discovering good, bad movies, one bad movie at a time. That's it. That's uh, we just came up with four. So so we're due, I'd say, for a good movie. I, I'll take it. Maybe good, maybe next, maybe next request. In the meantime, but, one oh go ahead. Well before before we bail out, I just have to I just have to ask what was your guy's response to the theme song? I can you sing it? <laughs> I I can. Cuz right now I have I gun will. smoke. I have do 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 do. Go ahead and hate your neighbor. Go ahead and cheat a friend. Do it in the name of heaven. You can justify it in the end. That one. I was actually pretty close. I knew it was kind of similar. That um it's something I soldier rides away. I will not keep that with me. I will yeah, not. That's something I'm playing in the car. No, my mother loved that song. Oh, oh. When when I told her I was finally watching Billy Jacks, she said, "Oh, the One Ten Soldier movies," and started singing that on the phone. It was a hit. It was like a fucking my heart will go on situation where the movie was a big hit. And then there was a single that was a big hit. Wow. And the hit size of the single sort of fed into the hit movie and the hit movie had this. It was like it was Titanic and heart goes go on. I, but was Billy Jack and that. Soldiers. I don't. That's that part that is so interesting. That's why I appreciate this bit of film history, because like if not for that, I don't think this movie like if not. Would you this- have ever supposed that song was a hit? No. If I had not just told you. No, never. So I'm just trying to like I'm still trying to tap into like what is it about this that I don't attention? know. Yeah, Unknown. they're ugly. They're incoherent. The action's not really that good. No. I mean, like the action is I would say the best part of the three movies in which there is action, but yeah. it's not like terrific action sequences. All right. Well, we won't tell Mama. Uh, Tom Tom Laughlin is a horrifyingly anti charismatic figure. Like watching him on my screen. Like, I almost couldn't look at the movie. Like, you know how, how when you're, like, stargazing, you don't look at the star, you look, like, six degrees to the side of the star, and that's when it seems brightest? Like, I felt like I had to look six degrees to the side of my TV screen because when I looked right in, in Tom Laughlin's face, my iris is just kind of, like, closed off, and I was blind <laughs> by his, his, like, his, like, snow white features. Uh, same. Yeah. Just did Sometimes I. it's better just to not know. <laughs> yes. But want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, head out to our Facebook page and like it. Twitter, where we're tweeting all the time. Instagram, or Instagram and alternateending.com. We'll find all our movie reviews, podcasts, and more. YouTube and Facebook, we will find all our videos. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google. And don't forget about Patreon. Next week, I will be off in... Uh, actually, next two weeks, I'll be off in making making movies. What are you um, going to do with your kids while you're gone? Oh, I have a, I have a, a, a wife for that. Wow. wow wow i thought you were gonna like some wow and, and you were like well we gotta be careful because he's problematic because he's white and then you're you know, off with that so i, I guess like, we know where the limits of rob's politics are it's like he's gonna come up with something creative that doesn't make him sound like was, an absentee asshole was but i was so great. wrong I, I figured i'd lean into the to the mustache that i've got it does look very I mean, very hitler it does i'll be posting it later hitler-y. That is horrifying. It's like, it's true, but it's also horrifying. No, thank you very much, Kara, for yeah. letting me live out my dream and uh, yeah. appreciate it. 
I your dream of having your wife serve you papers while you're in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It'll be less painful from afar. So you enjoy yourself. So I think Carrie, you, Tim, um, and uh and Brendan likely holding down the fort with the top five next week. Excited yeah. to see what you all come up with. Um, especially with the box or the the movies that are out there coming soon. Movies with animals. Like beast. We don't need your input, no, Rob. No input. We got this. All right, you got it figured out. If you want if you want to contribute to the top five, you need to show up on the show, Rob. That's, all right. that's how it works. That's Fair the enough. Role. Well, we will catch you next time.